Okay, let's get started. Good morning, uh, good evening, good uh, afternoon, wherever you are in this world. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today uh, to learn about sustainability shifts in Australia. My name is uh, Tomo Hamakawa. I'm the co-founder and uh, managing director of Earth Company, uh, which is a, I'll turn off the um, screen so you can see me a little bit and then I'll turn, turn the screen back on. Um, I'm based in Bali um, and I've been here for the last six years. I'm originally from Japan. Um, and uh, Earth Company is a social enterprise that's based both in Japan and, and Bali. Uh, and doing a number of things. I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, very shortly. Let's go back to the slides. Um, so today's schedule for the next 60 minutes or so uh, is for me to briefly uh, introduce Earth Company and our initiative called Operation Green. And then we'll um, pass the floor to Alex uh, who will share his lessons learned and insights from, um, from driving sustainability, sustainability shifts in Australia. And then we'll end with a, with a Q&A uh, and a very short survey um, at the very end. And I know you're here to mainly um, listen to what Alex has to say, so I'll keep mine short as possible. I uh, just want to set the context and I'll pass it on to, to Alex. So Earth Company, um, as I just mentioned earlier, uh, is a social enterprise that's based in Japan and, uh, and in Bali. And I think we all um, are aware of the, the environmental issues, social issues um, that, um, that surround us. And th these are really the reasons why Earth Company exists and, and what we're trying to address. Um, and you know, if the whole world lived like an average American, we would need five uh, Earths um, to sustain ourselves. This is very um, similar figures for other advanced countries. I know it's three three Earths for for an average uh, Japanese uh, lifestyle, and I'm sure it's very similar uh, in Australia as well. And then uh, in about 30 years, our, our world population will reach 10 billion, uh, and then the the, the infamous uh, statistics of marine plastic waste um, being more than uh, the amount of fish in our oceans. And then uh, in about 80 years, uh, global warming uh, is estimated to reach uh, plus four degrees, which uh, as a number is small, but it's uh, as an as a environmental effect, it is actually catastrophic. Uh, and it's expected to um, generate about 2 billion climate refugees and many other catastrophic effects. So we at Earth Company um, have been running this organization with this uh, quote, with this proverb from the Native Americans, uh, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. And it's a really um, kind of eye-opening uh, message um, that we cherish um, and we try to embody in our work. It's really about you know, um, giving back uh, and not about owning uh, or take advantage of, of things that we, we think we, um, we have. Earth Company uh, runs four programs, uh, Impact Hero program, which is a social accelerator program, and then we have Impact Bali program. Um, it's an educational program um, that takes place in Bali, but now we've started an online program. And then our, um, this project, Operation Green, actually sits under our uh, consulting work. And then our fourth, uh, our newest um, program or business is our eco hotel in, in Ubud, Bali, where I'm actually based right now. Uh, and we opened last September. Uh, we're trying to survive this uh, Corona period um, with, uh, with no tourism. So yeah, it's we're as you can imagine, we're going through a very, very tough time. But anyway, so Operation Green um, is a project that uh, Earth Company started about, uh, about two years ago. Uh, it's funded by the, the Japanese Ministry of Environment, uh, and therefore a lot of the content is actually in uh, Japanese still, and we apologize for that in advance. Um, and we're, we're slowly starting to develop English content based on our Japanese content, as well as reach out to um, 
to, to overseas uh, audiences just like this, just like through this webinar. Uh, we want to share a lot of what we learned um, through this work uh, in, a, in a much wider, um, wider audience. So the main question um, that drives us in this initiative is, is, is this. How might we transform all organizations into environmental conscious entities? The environmental case for the shift has never been clearer. Uh, and the business case is actually becoming stronger by the day. So meaning it actually is good for your business, good for your organization, financially and economically, uh, to make the sustainability shifts that Alex will talk more about. And so in, in a very, in a nutshell, and, and in very few words, Operation Green pushes organizations along their sustainability shifts. And if you go to our website, you can see this, um, these menu of options. Uh, so we've categorized uh, these measures into eight groups and 18 measures. And we're actually revising, revising this at the moment. And we're uh, actually up to about 30 measures. Uh, so this is slightly old. Uh, and we're, we're updating uh, this as we go. And maybe we'll add more, even more from Alex's uh, presentation today. We'll, we'll try to steal some of, of, of his, his, uh, his, his wisdom. So we're looking at you know, things like ease of implementation. Um, and I think Alex will talk more about this in terms of minimum efforts, maximum impact, which is a great phrase for this sustainability um, uh, work. It, it really needs to be easy uh, and then it needs to have uh, impact in terms of environmental impact, but also in terms of cost savings. So we're looking at, so we're, we're assessing uh, our measures across these, um, these parameters. And the Operation Green uh, community is looking for, you know, for people like you um, to join our, um, our community. Um, so whoever wants to learn about more you know, uh, eco measures, uh, who wants to connect with others making sustainability shifts. And I guess the most um, engaging part is to adopt eco measures in your own organizations. And Earth Company is actually uh, is, is here to support you in this uh, journey. The Operation Green community is not just uh, Earth Company ourselves, but we are um, we're partnering with many other organizations in, in and outside of Japan. Um, we have a number of uh, ambassadors um, who are, who are uh, experts in this area. I think the most uh, well-known might be uh, Taka, uh, who is Taka Tsuji, who is the former um, head of Patagonia Japan. And then we also have technical partners um, who are the experts in, you know, lighting, you know, water, uh, energy, uh, all these things that, um, that can actually support the implementation partners in adopting um, sustainability measures in their organizations. So um, with that, I want to um, pass the floor to Alex, uh, who is the co-founder and general manager of Reducing Our Footprints. Um, he and I connected just a few months ago, actually. Um, Alex sent us an email to uh, contact at earthcompany.info, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And he said, I'm coming to Bali. Uh, we look, it looks like we're doing very similar work. Uh, it would be great to connect. Uh, and then um, that was pre-COVID. Uh, and so naturally, his uh, plans, travel plans got canceled. Um, but we managed to uh, get on a Skype call and then we really hit it off. And um, yeah, I think there, there are a lot of things that we um, do, uh, uh, can do uh, together uh, and also learn from. And to be perfectly honest, if, you know, if Earth Company were operating Australia, uh, we would be direct com competitors uh, doing very similar things. Uh, so I don't know who will be talking at all. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's very interesting to, to learn about, you know, someone and an organization that's doing very similar work in a very different geography um, so that we can, you know, learn from each other. But before I pass on the um, floor to, to Alex, we want you, all the participants, to utilize a chat box. Uh, this is actually practice um, for you to use a chat box so that um, you can use a chat box later uh, during Alex's presentation and after the presentation to enter your comments and questions. Uh, so if you can, um, if you allow me, 
to um, enter OK or a location where you're calling in from today so that um, we can we know that you are actually there listening uh, to this and not um, we're not just speaking into some uh, to empty um, computer screen. So we're getting some good, great. Thank you, thank you. I think a uh, special shout out to uh, Kevin uh, Gital from um, Nairobi, Kenya. I know it's a ridiculous time there right now, uh, four or five o'clock in the morning. So I think he's definitely making the, the, <laughs> the most effort to join this. And I know there are many others from different parts of um, the world from um, from Hawaii, um, from Bali, from Tokyo, Sydney. Um, so it's it's really great to have a very international, very diverse um, audience. So thank you for engaging uh, with us in this exercise. Okay, now I'll pass the floor to Alex. All yours. Cool. Hello, hi everybody. Um, thanks so much, uh, Tomo, for the wonderful introduction. Yes, it's been a very interesting, I guess, journey connecting with you a few months ago. And, you know, now we're here together presenting to an international audience. Uh, so, um, fantastic. I'm just going to open up my slides. There we are. So, yeah, I'm Alex uh, from uh, ROF, uh, Reducing Our Footprint. So just a little bit about us. We are a social enterprise and uh, our purpose is to reduce um, the impact on the environment. We do this through sustainable solutions, personalized solutions that we provide to community, individuals, businesses, uh, festivals and events. And we follow uh, the motto that uh, Tomo mentioned earlier, the minimum effort, maximum impact. So that kind of summarizes the fact that we want to provide simple, practical hands-on solutions that people and organizations can implement uh, immediately and have a direct impact. Um, now, we've been very lucky over the last um, uh, several years to work with some amazing partners and communities. Uh, a big thank you uh, to Operation Green and you know, the fact that we've been able to, to connect and, and to share with all of you today um, some of these experiences. We wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for our partners and the, the community. So what I would like to talk to you uh, a bit more specifically about is first give you an overview of our services and some case studies. Then we're going to look at a, a model for change that I use. Um, it's like a framework I use when talking to business here in Australia. Uh, then summarizing a bit, uh, uh, and giving you guys sort of key lessons and challenges that we picked up over the last years, um, some upcoming projects. So what's, what's in the pipeline? And then you know, should you wish to engage our services or to continue conversation and collaborate how do we go about that and then we can uh, have a q a session and, and there were some questions already that came through i think the other the other day through the, uh, uh, the pre-event survey so we can start by addressing those so um we focus on three key areas uh, education business and waste management so let's go into each of those in a little bit more detail from an educational perspective uh, we run one-on-one -on -one and group trainings. Uh, these are um, dedicated to uh, schools, to communities, to individuals. They typically are one to one and a half hour sessions and they follow our rough 10 step journey, which I'll explain to you guys in a minute. Uh, again, they're packed with immediate actionable solutions and we charge a fee for one of these sessions or uh, in, in, in some cases uh, we can offer them for free with uh, the support of councils and, and state governments, so through the support of grants. Um, our 10-step journey um, looks a bit like this. So it, it's, it's really um, a journey towards living sustainably in, in 10 simple steps. Uh, so you can think of it a bit as a, as a game where you start as the explorer. Uh, so you, you're not familiar with sustainability. You're not really familiar with uh, the concept of zero waste. So you start your journey and, and then you, you move on to refusing single single use uh, items and plastics and that, that qualifies you to kind of uh, level two which is the zero waste where you learn to reduce food waste buying bulk um, you know becoming a low waste parent 
Uh, and then that qualifies you to this level three of the conscious consumer where you start to look outside of your household. You have a more holistic perspective and you choose uh, you know, to embrace a plant-based diet, uh, slow fashion, be more energy smart and, and also travel more responsibly. Um, now I was sharing this journey with uh, uh, your son in Japan the other day. And she, um, and she mentioned that there's a few, um, I guess, steps that could be of, of interest um, to, or could be something new to you guys. So maybe we can touch upon a few of these briefly, just to give you a bit of an overview. So one is the step four, buying in bulk. So this is all about you know, choosing reusables. So choosing to use tote bags, reusable uh, produce bags, reusable containers to store your staples. So you can buy staples nowadays in Australia in bulk stores or even major supermarkets have bulk aisles. So this basically prevents all the unnecessary packaging. Um, this is true for staples when it comes to um, uh, fresh produce like fruit and vegetables, meat and fish. Uh, we suggest shopping locally and also in this case you can go with your own um, bags, your own um, containers and that avoids all unnecessary uh, packaging. So by performing some of these tasks, which we present in a, in a one hour webinar, you can reduce your packaging waste by 70, 80% at home. So it's quite impactful. Um, another key webinar that uh, attracted a lot of attention over the last um, years is DYI products. So this is about creating uh, low waste, low chemical cleaning and personal hygiene products. Um, it's amazing actually how with very few natural ingredients, you can create basically all the products you need to look after your home and, and yourself. So this typically runs 30 minutes uh, theory session, and then there's a 45 minute to an hour hands-on uh, session to create the products. Um, another step that um, attracted uh, attention was uh, low waste parenting. So here we look at um, uh, moving away from disposable nappies, which are a huge waste stream in most countries. Here, it's a big, big problem. Uh, so we look at you know alternatives like cloth nappies, and then we look at uh, another um, key um, key aspect of um, of, of toys with, with with kids. So moving away from uh, or let's say choosing to use toy libraries. I'm not sure sure you're familiar with the concept of toy library uh, wherever you are in the world. Um, it's like a book library, but um, but with toys. So you pay a monthly membership fee, and you can um, access or your kid can access three, five, 10 toys, depending on the membership fee that you choose. And this ensures novelty, because every month you can, the kid can choose new, new, new toys, and also ensures that you have access to certain games and toys that uh, you know, normally are maybe uh, not affordable for, for you. Uh, another step Alex, that- Sorry, uh, what's, what's op shops, Alex? Uh, Op shops is a, a opportunity shops. So I probably should have spelt it. So these are um, they're secondhand shops, uh, but here in Australia we call them opportunity shops. So generally they're like secondhand shops, but they're um, they're, they're they're really stores where everything is well classified. So um, you can go there and find uh, an opportunity fashion item. I guess that's that's where the name comes. Right. From. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. No worries. Um, yeah, another step that we've, um, we've been running, this is in partnership with a, a, a nutritionist, a health expert, uh, Mr. Mark, uh, is um, embracing a plant-based diet. So this is all about moving to plant-based or vegetarianism or veganism, and if, you, if you choose to, to do that. Uh, we come in from an environmental perspective, and then Mark comes in more from a nutritional and health perspective. Um, Slow fashion, so this has been, um, uh, this is a, a webinar uh, around moving away from fast fashion, embracing slow fashion. So choosing, I guess, um, less items, but more quality items. Also learning how to um, create new looks and styles using fewer items. So you can create compatible looks and styles with, with, with a few, few clothing items, purchasing secondhand, and also learning how to repair. Um, and then finally, another, uh, um, I guess, another step that might be of interest to uh, you guys around the world is uh, traveling responsibly. So here uh, we, we share how to um, embrace the, the share economy, essentially. There are um, 
there are companies like BlaBlaCar, um, there are you know Mobike, for instance. So instead of instead of purchasing, renting, and and sharing trips rather than you know always using uh, using your own car. So ways you can also save on, on transport costs and also uh, obviously reduce your, your your footprint. So just a few uh, just an overview of some of those steps that might be a little bit new to some of you. Um, Again, what we typically do is we run these in uh, through community workshops. So we, we tend to run these steps uh, or multiple steps uh, at least once a month or even twice a month. It's a great way for us to kind of engage with the community and uh, also build our volunteer base. So we've been really uh, lucky over the last years to have uh, volunteers step in and help us uh, to, to kind of uh, you know, boost ROF uh, at the national level. So this is a bit the first pillar, education. Our second pillar is around business. And, and this is really all about creating personalized programs and projects with businesses. So uh, we, we tailor the programs to the customer needs. So this is really critical. Uh, it's all about creating greener working spaces, greener teams. And, and like Tom also mentioned a bit earlier, it's not just about lowering costs, but it's also about you know, boosting uh, environmental image, uh, about boosting the opportunity to acquire young talent, because a lot of young people today want to work for environmentally conscious organizations. So it's finding all those benefits and creating a, a really concise and comprehensive plan. Uh, just um, on business, so what I do, uh, uh, what I've been using uh, over the last years is, is a framework called ATCAR. Um, this stands for awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and reinforcement. So these are really five key pillars that, um, that uh, I guess, to follow in that order and also to ensure that the, the, the change project um, is, is, um, you know, is implemented in, in the best possible way. So what do these actually kind of mean? Uh, awareness is, is you know, bringing attention uh, to, to the need for change. And we do this through webinars and presentations with business. But it's not enough to provide awareness. We also then need to bring, bring desire, motivation to participate and, and, and be part of that change. And this is done by showing employees and the staff and the business how introducing this change, introducing new sustainable practices can have a positive impact on their business. So again, not just from a cost perspective, but also from an image perspective. Uh, from a talent acquisition perspective and of course from an environmental perspective. Um, then we look at building a plan and a process, so something tailored and, uh, to, to, the, to the company uh, and to their needs and this is all about you know, delivering the knowledge of how to make the change happen. Now it's not enough to deliver knowledge or to uh, share knowledge, we also need to provide ability to really implement this, this change on a day-to-day -day level and here we create materials and tools like signage, like um, cheat sheets, activities, games for the employees to really um, engage with these activities. Uh, some we already have, some we create with the business based on their needs. And then final step, uh, which often is overlooked, but uh, really important is reinforcement. So this is um, uh, to make sure that the change stays in place and that people don't revert back to their old habits. So the way we do this is through pledges, follow-ups, surveys. Uh, sometimes we also, um, come in again as ROF uh, to, to kind of uh, re reintroduce or reinforce the message again. Um, so we've used this framework, this framework with um, big organizations like WeWork. Um, here we've organized like, two month uh, uh, programs, um, first month uh, focusing on organic separation, second month more on recycling. We've worked recently with yeah, Cisco. Uh, we've done a big training with all their staff uh, nationally and, and with New Zealand. Uh, all around waste minimizations and recycling. Uh, what I really liked about this project is the fact that Cisco really got on board with, uh, with um, the campaign and, and we now created a, like a, a LinkedIn uh, page where people can upload images of their achievements and, and uh, kind of boost their achievements with their coworkers. So it's really creating an engaging and active space, which again is also great to uh, promote that reinforcement that I was talking about earlier. Um, and then another project was with the Royal Children's Hospital. So we've done some work with hospitals. Here it was all around low waste and low chemical lifestyle and influencing staff and their families to live this more um, uh, low chemical lifestyle, essentially. Um, last, uh, last pillar of, uh, of, um, of what we do of our services is waste management. So here, this is really all about working with festivals and events. Um, 
they're very ad hoc uh, projects depending on the scope of the of the festival and the size of the festival um, typically they can run from three to, to six months a, a big component of, of, of this uh, pillar is the analysis and reporting so we generally need to then report to council or to state government uh, and uh, and show the impact that all the activities we've introduced at the festival level have had um, so one big project we, we, we are running uh, is with the World Vegan Day. So this is a festival with 25,000 people. Not sure what will happen this year with the World Vegan Day given the circumstances, but uh, um, you know, here we've introduced uh, uh, reusable cups, as you can see from the image on the right. So uh, people could rent these cups at the beginning of the day and then return them at the end of the day and get their kind of money back. So that avoids all disposable cups and, um, and you know, plastic cups or coffee cups going into uh, into waste um, we had water water stations and rinsing stations for the crockery that we brought in so reusable crockery we created signage uh, and bin stations so clear signage so people would understand what goes where in what bin important was also to have a volunteer monitor the the bin stations to really make sure that that separation occurred uh, and again, like a, a big component of this was the council reporting. Um, another project that falls under um, waste management for us is WasteX. So this is a circular food solution with hospitality. So we engage with restaurants, collect their food, sep train their staff to separate their food waste at uh, the rest in the restaurant, collect the, the, the food waste, compost it, and then bring it back to the restaurant in the form of vegetables, herbs. Uh, etc so this is an ongoing project as well um, great so this is a this is a bit of an overview of you know what we've what we do uh, and uh, also our major uh, our major like say case studies over over the last uh, years uh, what I would like to spend a bit of time on now is um, uh, looking at some key lessons so what, what we've learned kind of summarizing what we've learned over the last few years and then looking at how um, now, what, what were the critical success factor in businesses to implement some of the sustainability um, strategies and then some challenges and I guess failures as well that we that we encountered um, so key lessons um, I think really important is sustainability in, in sustainability there's really a lot of opportunities so it, it's it's a relatively new field um, you can you know you can really take it wherever wherever you want and uh, at least from my experience i've learned a lot through trial and error so it's really about you know trying things um and seeing where they take you and, and you learn from your mistakes uh, i also learned through through the years that it's important to diversify so we started as a community-based organization so just with the educational side and then we've expanded to, um, to work with business and, and, and then the waste management side as well with festivals. So I think diversity is, is important, a bit like we saw earlier from Tomo with his four, four key pillars. Uh, but also it's easy to kind of get a bit diluted. So it's also important once you've identified your pillars to, to stay focused. Um, second key point for me is there's really a lot of resources out there. So you're, you're not alone in this, if that's a good, good news. Uh, so tap into networks, build networks, um, use all the available apps and technology that are that are there, and I think collaboration is uh, is really critical. Um, and again, I think um, you know what Operation Green is doing as a platform to share resources and education. I think is really great, and and I think this is how um, how we can uh, grow together because obviously together we can have a, a larger impact. Um, Another thing I've learned is that people feel really overwhelmed by sustainability and that they don't usually know where to start. So giving them a clear framework like, like um, you know, the four R's or the ADGAR model that we just discussed, I think is really helpful. Um, also, this is the reason we developed the 10 step journey. So it really keeps it simple, practical, uh, and people know, you know, wh where they are, where they stand. Um, then sustainability is personal. I mean, we, we, you can't force people to be, you know, become sustainable and you can't even, you know, force where they should start. So everyone should start wherever they feel like it's, it's right and incorporate whichever habit they feel like incorporating first. So from our perspective, at least it's important to, uh, per, you know, personalize the approach, adapt. And um, um, I think very important is also uh, using positive messaging we we tend to not want to focus on the problems but always provide solutions so the world is full of a lot of problems we, we we know that it's important to be aware of it and then let's look at what we can do to really have an impact and change 
And lastly, I think from my perspective is let's not seek perfection because um, sustainability, I don't think is about perfection. Um, we are constantly learning. The really important thing is to, to start, you know, not just to think about what we can do, but let's actually do it. And you'll be surprised how small changes can have a huge impact. And then it becomes fun and engaging and you want to keep doing more and more. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. Um, now, just some business success factors. So, you know, what were the businesses that we've been working with that then were very successful at implementing sustainable practices? So a few common points here. Uh, having a sustainability champion within the business, I think is, is really critical. So you need to have somebody within your organization you're working with that really uh, pioneers the sustainability practices and that um, really motivates the, the, the staff. Um, it also really helps to drive reinforcement and you know it, it can be your point of contact you know between Roth and, and the organization so um, I think that those companies that were able to identify that individual successfully uh, then also had more successful um, um, sustainability practices introduced um, very important is building close collaboration and engaging with the team so it's not just as we've seen also earlier no, it's not just about engaging the sustainability team, but it's also about engaging uh, human resources. So, you know, how can these um, practices help, um, you know, acquire young talent? How can it also help bring teams together? So as a team bonding exercise to create more collaborative and communicative teams, and then how you can also work with the corporate communications team. So how can these sustainable practices then be used from a marketing PR and corporate image perspective? So those companies, um, so for instance, with Cisco, just to give you a practical example uh, versus with WeWork, uh, with WeWork, uh, I think we could have done maybe a bit more um, over, over, you know, uh, rather than just focusing on organics and then recycling, we would have probably introduced more sustainable practices, but the communication there was a bit more challenging. We didn't have such a supportive team, uh, maybe because also internally they, they had, they had some, some difficulties. With Cisco, on the other hand, I was immediately put in contact with the wider team uh, of HR, um, corporate communications director and all the sustainable um, team. So we worked really collaboratively to bring the project to life and, 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 and the success was, um, you could see the success and, and the difference. So I think that's, that's really critical. Um, and then um, working with businesses that share a common vision with you. Uh, you know, at first, I um, I wanted to I wanted to make all the businesses, you know, uh, or spread sustainability everywhere. Let's say, but um, actually, I think uh, you should choose who who you work with, and having uh, you know sharing a common vision, I think, is really important. Um, otherwise, you're just you know pushing uh, pushing things uphill. So uh, finding businesses that believe in the change, that want to you know spread the positive message will really also help uh, um, you know, introduce those practices and, and work more collaboratively together. Um, now some failures and challenges. So um, what we still, what I still find difficult today is um, uh, sometimes showing value in, in what we do. Uh, again, most people think sustainability as just environmental. So um, yes, it is important for that. Obviously we, we all want to care about the planet and do the right thing with regards to the planet, but then, when you talk to business, it's not just about that. What ticks uh, their boxes is uh, often, uh, again, uh, talent, uh, image, marketing and PR and costs. So uh, it's important to, to focus on all these aspects as well. And, and, and I think the framework that Tomo was um, uh, showing earlier is, is, is really great. So I'd love to actually talk to, to you, Tomo, a bit more about that. So that's, that's really, really cool. Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, another challenge is you know clients uh, tend to seek perfection, I guess, and and um, and uh, I don't think in sustainability there is such a thing as perfection, and there's no like finite goal. There's always more that can be done, and uh, and it's a new field, so there's um you know we don't have all the solutions. I think we need to kind of learn and work um, um, together and keep an open mind. And then finally, um, I struggle sometimes with uh, you know. Um, with metrics, I think uh, it's important to have metrics and show the impact. That's why we, you know, we, we track energy and waste, office costs, and, and and the positive impact introducing sustainable practices have. 
but it's not just about about the metrics it's also really having a holistic perspective so it's really about influencing how people um, work together creating healthier more active communities and, 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 and teams so hopefully this gives you a little bit of a you know a bit of a inspiration a bit of a, a, an idea of what we do or what we've done here in Australia um, I want to leave you uh, with uh, just a few uh, up-and-coming projects that we've got in the pipeline. So from an educational perspective, we are migrating um, our um, you know, face-to-face workshops to, to digital. Uh, from a business perspective, we're creating a kind of a team bonding game with clear tasks and to make it a bit more fun and engaging and waste management. We're creating um, some organic kits. So just briefly, um, yeah, we're piloting, um, we're piloting an online a course in the next week or so and the intention then is to develop the whole 10-step journey in an online program um, from a business perspective we're creating these sustainability games so it's like a 10 the 10 step journey uh, but for business and made in a way that is engaging and fun for for staff because again sustainability sometimes can feel a bit overwhelming can feel a bit like heavy and we, we want to keep it light-hearted and simple for for, for businesses and then uh, lastly, waste management, these are the kits uh, that we would like to introduce. So uh, again, collecting, of separating at, at restaurant level, the food waste, collecting it, composting it, and then bringing it back in the form of these kits where um, restaurants can either on-sell them or they can use the kits to grow their own vegetables and, and fresh herbs for their meals. Uh, that leaves me with uh, my last... Uh, last slide uh, just if if there's anything that you uh, you know enjoyed in, in today's presentation if, if you believe there's anything we can engage with and, and help you with uh, please reach out you know from an individual and community session perspective we run these sessions uh, typically one hour one and a half hours for four hundred dollars uh, or Australian dollars uh, either face to face or we can do this over webinars from a business perspective um, Typically, I, uh, I would charge uh, around $500 for a, for a one-off webinar just to engage uh, staff and business on a specific topic. If we then create a program that runs over several months, we're looking at a uh, $1,000 plus. And then from a, let's say, festival perspective, it's really uh, ad hoc, depending on the scope of the festival and the duration. Again, these can be three to six months of project. Um, having said that, if you, um, if you want to just have a, a conversation, uh, we, we offer a free 30-minute you know, consultation just to get to know each other, to understand you know, how your business runs, what are the opportunities, how we can introduce maybe some new practices and help you guys. Um, so please reach out uh, and you, you can write to hello at rofit.com, which is my email address. And um, I think that's all from me. So. Um, um, yeah, I thank you for, for your, your time, wherever you are, uh, <laughs> whatever time frame it is. And um, hopefully there's, uh, you know, some, some insights, some information you can bring back uh, to, to your home country and to your business. Um, and yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, open up to Q&A and see if there's any, any questions. Great. Thanks so much, Alex. No, no, um, thank you. Do you want to turn off the screen? Great. All right. Perfect. Yeah, that was really, really uh, interesting, uh, especially those slides on the key lessons, the business success factors, failures and challenges. I think we can talk for hours on, <laughs> on, on any of those points, I think. Um, and really, um, yeah, and then I think the, you know, from, from our perspective, the 10-step journey, I think, is a really um, practical and useful way to think about this um, because as you, as you explained, you know, I think the the few issues in this one is is around um, like where do where do you start right, and then the other one is is that there, there's so it's overwhelming right because we're all I think if you read any news um, you know all the things that you can do right or yeah. the things that you're supposed to do, but obviously we're not doing many of them um, for for an average person, and so it's really like how do you pick and choose like the one or two or two or three things you want to start with at home or, or in your office. Right. And I guess yeah. while, uh, while people type in their questions, um, I'll just start off with, uh, with a question that I received actually from, um, a, a previously, 
was was really around like prioritization, right? And then I think this this question was coming from someone who really cares about sustainability. And it's like, what well, what are the from your perspective, what are one or two things that would have the biggest kind of environmental impact? Um, and I think that can be, you know, defined or measured in kind of different ways, um, in terms of, you know, carbon or in terms of, you know, there's so many different ways. But, you know, what are what would be your one or two like top things that you would say like start with this <laughs> um well i mean i feel like um there's two sides i guess to to the to the question because there's a there's a book i don't know if you if you heard of it tom called drawdown so this is a it's a oh, book yeah, uh, yeah, yeah yeah so you know obviously there there's you know scientists i think there's a hundred people that kind of wrote the book and 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 they look at them what what are the major um uh, technology shifts that can enable, you know, reducing carbon emissions. So, so there's that aspect, but that probably doesn't really, um, in, you know, impact us at, at the everyday level. So I think from an everyday perspective, um, you know, a bit following that 10 step journey that we developed, um, you know, um, if, if you want to start with something simple, I mean, you can follow the 10, the 10 step journey was developed really with this in mind. So start with like sing, refusing single use plastics, you know, that's, that's I think fairly simple, but has a, has an impact a big impact then food waste food waste is i would say one of the biggest um concerns globally you know if we um if we reduced uh, you know all the i mean because of methane as you know of food going into landfill and just in general it's, it's also not a complicated exercise to separate food waste it's just a matter of incorporating it uh, in, into your habits and, and it's actually amazing what you can do then with that you know, those food scraps I and mean, you can create um, soups, you can create, uh, you know, new recipes or you can create compost with it. So there's really no need for it to, to end up in, in landfill. So I would definitely start, you know, with choosing reusables, um, composting and, uh, and then, yeah, that will then lead to buying in bulk. So avoiding all the unnecessary kind of packaging. Um, then if you really want to look at major lifestyle changes, I think moving to a plant-based diet. So, um, that has a big major change because the the meat industry, as as some of you might know, is is um, um, quite harmful. Um, I, I'm not now here suggesting we shouldn't eat meat or fish. This is really a personal choice, so I'm, I'm not here to promote you know any of these. This is um, not not my not my role. But uh, there is uh, there are some facts that obviously are indisputable that it takes a lot of energy, and uh, you know it could it could be. Um, shifted to um or it could you know we could reduce that impact by by moving to a more plant-based diet and also from a health perspective it's something positive so i think um i think the key message there is you know uh, being more mindful i guess about what we eat i think is is, is important great uh, great yeah thank you no worries yeah that's interesting the uh interesting you mentioned about food scraps and using them uh for consumption actually that's that's what we do at our restaurants uh at our eco hotel uh there's a there's a there's a dish called veggie broth which is basically cool. we, we traditionally considered food scrap right so these are all these the, the 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 peel and all these the you know leftovers from cutting up vegetables uh, and then if you actually put that into a big pot and then boil it, it actually is a very, very nutritious. Uh, and and awesome. some people argue that it's the most, uh, most nutritious part of, of the vegetables. And so you're actually throwing away um, in, in most, most households and businesses the, the best part, the most nutritious part. And so, yeah, that's something that we, we're doing here uh, to also as, as a way to uh, minimize um, food waste. Sure. Yeah, create circular solutions. I guess. Yeah. 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 The, um, there's one question um, from a Balinese participant, um, not actually a foreigner living in Bali, our friend um, John, Johnny. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's actually this, uh, the question is around pledges and kind of statements um, that, you know, companies make. And so like, you know, uh, Bali is actually trying to establish a thing called the Bali pledge. And it's very similar to the Palau pledge, which you may have heard of. Like, so Palau, I think, uh, some years ago, decided to um, have every tourist entering the country to basically sign their name um, right. against the statement saying that they will, you know, they they will be mindful about protecting the island, you know, being mindful of, you know, of all these things socially and environmentally, right? And I think that's been really effective in, in the case of Palau. 
Okay. Um, and then the and then I guess Bali is trying to kind of imitate uh, and trying to replicate a similar initiative here, uh, especially in this um, effort to build back better. Right. So tourism has basically vanished here. But we want to when as we build tourism back um, with the um, with the emergence of reemergence of international travel, we want to do things better. And so there's a there's a movement of businesses and individuals uh, here to say, okay, let's let's create this Bali pledge so that yeah. everyone <clears throat> visiting or even people like like me and, and others who are, are living here are very mindful socially and environmentally. And I think a lot of companies do similar things in terms of statements, right? So they're, you know, sustainability statements saying that these are all the things that we're going to do. Um, just, yeah, just want to get your perspective on the effectiveness of these kinds of um, public statements or uh, commitments. Yeah. Um, I look, I think the initiative uh, is, is definitely worth pursuing. Uh, it also, you know, um, I mean, for tourists uh, coming to Bali, I think it sends out a good message, um, you know, that, that you care about your island. And if, uh, if people you know, visit, they should also be, be, be mindful and, and careful of, of, of uh, their practices. Um, so I definitely think there's, there's a scope and, and there's um, a role for that. Having said that, I think it's difficult, in my, in my mind at least, uh, it's difficult to imagine I mean, someone might pursue those objectives when they're visiting Bali, but then ultimately what you want is for them to bring those habits back home with them, or at least, you know, incorporate those habits first at home. Um, it's a bit the same thing when we talk to business. Like um, I always um, explain to business that if they want to create a greener office, that's great. We can help and support and create all these activities, but then we also need to make sure that the employees take those green habits back home with them as well. So it's important that both, um, both kind of work hand in hand, because if you're not sustainable at home, you're not going to be sustainable in the office or, or you're going to feel forced to do it. And, and force doesn't really, uh, as we know, doesn't really um, uh, last, let's say, or it's not done because you really feel like this is the right thing to right. do. So I, I think it will send the right message, but then my hope is that people will, you know, leave Bali and then, come back to Australia, just for an example, because all the Australians go to Bali, and then they will incorporate and think about it. So, um, and uh, another example I can give you is, uh, I think my mom recently, she went from uh, Italy to Greece, and uh, she went to a, like an eco resort in, in Greece, so probably similar a bit to, to, you know, what you guys are doing. And then when, then she realized how, how she could incorporate more sustainable habits into their, her everyday by just you know adopting some of those habits on holiday and then some of them came back with her and she does it now at home and others not so i think the two things kind of need to, right. need to but, it, but it's a good it's a good initiative yeah yeah it's a good start i guess yeah correct yeah, yeah. and yeah. at least it shows that you really care you know and, and i think um and, and that's that's important that you send out yeah. that message right um there's a question about um where do you look for in terms of uh, information on sustainability? <laughs> and, and that's, that's um, the background, I think, to her question is, you know, there's, there's so much information out there, you know, thanks to the internet and social media. And there's even like greenwashing, right? So there's, you know, a lot of fake uh, or less true information out there. Um, who are some of the people that you... Um, uh, gain your information from, or, or the, who are the trustworthy um, source of information for you? Um, yeah, I think that's that's a very relevant question in in today's world. You know, if we we, we are overabundance of information, but where where do we pick the the, the right information? Um, uh, I mean, you, I usually go through like reputable uh, sources. So um, here in Australia, at least, I generally, council does a pretty good job, you know, with providing information. Um, and then it's more personal network. So, um, you know, either organizations that I'm working with directly or indirectly, or people that I know that operate in sustainability that I can kind of, I guess, trust. And it's not just about a matter of trusting, it's also a matter of where you can share as well information and, and just um, see where, where it's coming from. Um, so I would encourage, I would encourage that, you know, Go to reputable sources. I think you know blogs. Um, uh, just typing into Google, yes, is a good start. But then always 
you know fact check what, what you're what you're using now if it's uh, you know coming from some international organization um then i mean yes i think you can you can take that for for you know reputable source if it's coming from the government if it's coming from an established organization um so yeah that's generally yeah, what you, I, would do. I mean i mean it can be done um after this but if you have like few few organizations that you have in mind specifically uh mm. that you wouldn't mind sharing with the, with the participants we can definitely do that um yeah Perfect. not that, not that you not that you're 100 percent vouching for them but you know these are some resources <laughs> that you consider um as part of your you know information gathering yeah um there's another question around how do you um engage with big companies right big corporate so where is the entry point um or, or maybe, maybe there's the entry point but there's also like the, the most effective counterpart right so is it the ceo or is it the hr manager is it the CSR department? Is there like a sustainability department? What, what's been your experience, especially, you know, working with, I guess, WeWork and Cisco and, and some of these other bigger yeah. um, organizations? Yeah, that's the million dollar question for, for a salesperson, I guess. I mean, my background is in sales and business development, so uh, I can definitely relate to that question very well. Um, Generally speaking, uh, to enter, I think a big, a big company. Um, I, I, first, if you have a personal contact, that is that is key. You know, if you know somebody, uh, whoever, you know, it can even be a, an assist. You know, someone that just joined the organization, but someone that can kind of vouch for you and then point you in the right direction. Because it's sometimes really hard um, to, to identify who the right person is. So I think number one, I would suggest, you know approach talk to your friends approach your personal network and see who works where and and, and start there that's that's that will be the, the key the first because that will ensure you know you, you get introduced correctly and that person then kind of vouches for you and also pushes your message to the right person and then generally um and generally uh, when it comes to sustainability i've been usually going through uh, hr um that's kind of seems hr and then the sustainability um team if there is a sustainability team so some of the large organizations today have a sustainability team um, or they're, they're starting so that's also a good way to kind of collaborate because you can help them um, in that in that field HR sustainability team and then um, what did I want to say and corporate communications so Cisco for instance uh, I uh, my, my point of contact was uh, Corey who is um, the corporate communications director so uh, I mean it helps that she's just completed her um, you know, MBA in circular economy, is <laughs> fully on board. But um, yeah, so um, personal net, personal contact, HR, sustainability, corporate, corporate communications. Right. Those, those are generally the Great. four point of contact. <laughs> very, very interesting. And I guess maybe if I can share some of our experience at our Please. campus, that's, that's really, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times what we discuss internally as well. How do you approach, you know, these uh, other organizations? And the most effective um, ones have been most definitely, you know, when you can work from the top down, right? When you can, when we meet the CEO or the, the founder, and then so the message is communicated um, from the top down. But then obviously the, you know, the 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 day to day communication happens with, you know, a, someone lower than than the top level. Yeah. And a, a lot of times, what we do is working with like the operations director. Especially okay. because we're 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 working on you know operations, looking at things like electricity, look, things like water, uh, things like that, and it's really the the operations, uh, whatever it's called, right? So person who is doing admin and operations yeah. um, has it has decision making power over over those things, right? And so um, and those yeah, and, and a lot of times th these operation teams don't. Uh, are not the most like um, I guess the flashy, the most you know prestigious you know departments in these com in these big companies. So a lot of times they're very excited to talk about these things and and to bring you know new ideas and innovation through this that angle into into these companies. So um, that's that's been really encouraging to see um, for us. Right. Um, we have maybe one more question and then we'll unfortunately have to wrap up. Um, there, there are actually many, many questions 
um, to uh, that are coming in, and maybe I can share them. The, the ones that we can't answer, I can share them with you later, and then maybe you can um, uh, answer uh, in writing, and then we yeah, can share. Yeah, we can do that. Um, sure. The 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 last question is really, you know, a very kind of personal and kind of a basic question. Like, if 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 I am a sustainability person, you know, adopting some of these measures, how do I encourage you know, family members and friends to, to mimic that kind of sustainability lifestyle. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, what I feel like saying is, um, I think le lead, leading by example, right? I mean, um, I think that's, that's true at your household level, but it's also true at the community level and then at the global level. So you start by, you know, um, uh, I guess, start by um you, you need to how can how do you say this you you need to be the change you want to see in the world right so so if you if you first incorporate um uh, okay i give you i give you my example i mean we, we anais my partner and i we went through this kind of sustainability journey together uh, you know and and that's how the rough journey and the 10-step journey and the organization kind of was born so we kind of live and breathe for our experiences what we do and i think that's really important because then you know, people can see through somebody that is not kind of genuine or doesn't really, you know, incorporate, I guess, these practices themselves. So if, if you live them and breathe them, I think then it becomes infectious because people that then, you know, they want to also kind of be part of that and, and they see the genuinity and, and, and the impact that they can have on, on, on also on other people and, and they will follow. So I encourage you first to, you know, look at yourself, make the changes you, you want to see in the world and then, then, you'll, then you'll realize that more and more people Will want to join the movement and it will spread from your household to the community and then to uh to, to you guys in operation green and then global etc so that's how we can all make an impact and work together right great thank you so much um we now at this point um will like to ask you to take a one minute survey here and now uh before you sign off uh and to do all the great things with the rest of your day. Uh, we'll share the Google form uh, link uh, in the chat box. And so if you can fill that out now, that would be great. And then we'll have some announcements um, after one minute. Um, so yeah, please complete the survey. Um, and then there's, there's opportunity for you to also um, uh, let us know if you want to engage further. Uh, there's also a question about um, taking Alex up on the free consultation um, offer. So if you can, yeah, open the link up and then um, complete that, that would be really great. Antoine, let's do what you said. Um, maybe we can collect the rest of the questions that we didn't have time to, to answer just in the essence of time. And, and then I can, yeah. I can have a look at them, you know, offline and, and, and get back to you guys. You can share. Sure, sure, let's do that, yeah. Great. Great. Just for everyone's information, we had about 40 participants um, in this webinar today. Um, so yeah, thanks again for Great. attending. Um, and I think the, you know, the, the kinds of questions that we were getting really demonstrate the, the level of interest in this, uh, in this topic. So yeah, I'm really glad that we made this happen. Thanks, Alex. Oh, no, thank you guys. Uh, it's been a real pleasure and uh, okay. I know to share the experiences and thanks for organizing uh, the, this whole program and, and sessions. Uh, Tomo. It's been yeah, great. a lot of fun cool. to pull it all together. Yeah. Just, uh, just to wrap up, um, I hope everyone had a chance to complete the survey. Uh, we actually have one more uh, webinar, very similar to this, coming up uh, on July 1st, so in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's by uh, Manuel Bergman, uh, who's actually Earth Company's partner um, organization. Uh, and he is of German origin, but based uh, in, in Bali, um, just a few minutes away from where I am uh, right now. Uh, and then he'll also be talking about um, 
uh, you know, incorporating sustainability into your daily life. Um, very similar topic, but but from a different, uh, slightly different approach. So I hope you um, can join us. Uh, we'll share the details with you later, uh, especially if you can share with us your email. Uh, we'll be we'll be sure to get that information to you um, very soon. Um, last but not least, here's some contact information. Um, about Operation Green, about Earth Company, as well as uh, ROF. And so um, please, you know, send us an email or um, uh, like follow us on, on Facebook or whatever, um, if you were inspired by this webinar. Yeah, um, just want to say thank you again, Alex, um, for this. Uh, and uh, yeah, this, for, for at least for me, this gives us uh, a lot of content for us to talk about uh, in the future. So it was, it was personally a really uh, informative and useful um, session. So thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks very much for, for this. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank Take you. care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.